Lethal League Blaze is a game where you hit a ball around the screen. Since the premise is so simple, naturally, the games are fairly relaxed experiences. Witness my true power! What the fuck? Foolish mortals! <laughs> Once the ball hits an enemy player enough times to deplete their health bar, the player dies until the next round. It's a fairly straightforward system that is quite easy to grasp. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball right now? Where? Where's? Where, oh, where's the ball? Where's? Lethal League Blaze is the sequel to the first Lethal League and is the fifth installment in the League video games franchise. There are up to ten playable characters. Their names are Doombox and everybody else. All right, mates, let's have a rough and tumble match. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Oh god. Boom boy. They're so big. Now I've never really done a real video game review before. Usually I'm just kind of a jackass who makes shitty jokes and can't stop yelling about god knows what. But when I tried out this game, it just really made me want to make a review on it. And so here I am. Now I started playing the first Lethal League a couple months ago. The first time I had the concept for this game explained to me, my reaction was, wow. What the fuck? It was just so weird. It's a fighting game, but instead of hitting each other, you hit a ball that bounces around the screen, which can in turn hit and kill enemy players. It's Ball Boys 2, Revenge of the Ball, really. Now on the surface, this can just seem like some gimmicky bullshit, but after playing the game, you start to realize just how much depth there is to the gameplay. Each character has their own jump height, hit angle, and super move. For example, Latch can eat and spit out the ball, Dice can curve the ball, and Candyman's a fucking dickhead. Fucking dickhead Candyman. Fucking piece of shit. There are all sorts of ways to trick your opponent, like bunting the ball, hitting it at strange angles, Angles, parrying really late. There's a lot of cool shit in the game that let it stand on more legs than just Oh, whoa! Fighting game, but you hit a ball! Wow, so different! Expectations shattered! Social commentary! I feel like there are a lot of games and really just general forms of media that try to rely solely on having a unique concept to attract an audience. When the truth is, the concept doesn't mean dick if the finished product isn't good. Just because the concept's good doesn't mean that the end product's good, okay, mom and dad? Take No Man's Sky, for example. Wow, exploration. 15 million billion planets, unique atmospheres, mutant demon creatures, the vastness of space travel. But it sucked. It fucking sucked, Jerry. It was fucking garbage. You can't rely solely on your gimmick for your game to be good. A good concept does not equal a good execution. Lethal League, on the other hand, nailed both of these. It was a game that not only had a really unique concept, but was also fun as shit and was able to stay fresh for me for a long ass time. It's a good game, and in my opinion, it was criminally underrated. Now, the question remains, is the sequel just as good? Yes! It's fucking, it's fucking amazing. It, it's fucking, it's really only good because they put Doombox in the game. Now right here, before I talk about the game itself, I actually just want to talk about video game sequels in general. I feel like video game sequels can range anywhere between these two polarities. A, what the fuck does this have to do with the original? And B, this is exactly the same, why did you make this? I'm probably still gonna buy it though, because I'm a fucking idiot. I'm still gonna buy it, of course, both please. Both of these extremes are garbage to me. If a sequel to a game is extremely different from the original, then why is it a sequel and not its own thing? For example, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. This game took a series that was about platforming and collecting shit and turned it into a game about car assembly. Excuse me. People fucking hated this shit. But the thing is, the game itself was not that bad. It was alright. However, it was not alright for a Banjo-Kazooie game. If this was a standalone game with its own characters and properties, people probably would have liked it a lot more. If it's so different, then why attach it to the original franchise? Why not just make your own- Oh, wait, right. And on the other end of the spectrum, if the sequel's too similar to the original, then why am I even buying it if I can just play the original? The first thing that comes to mind for this is sports games, like FIFA or Madden. Here, which one of these clips is from the newer game and which one is older? Yeah, I can't tell either, and I have the vision of a god. Ideally, a video game sequel should fall right in the middle, similar enough that it feels like a sequel, but different enough that it can stand on its own. A fantastic example of this that I'm heavily biased towards is the original Spyro the Dragon trilogy. The two sequels maintained the original control scheme and playstyle, so in each game you still felt like Spyro. But as the games progressed, the level design, new abilities, and overall quality of life just got better and better and better. And then in 2002, they released this one. And then three years later, Hurricane Katrina happens, so I'll just let that speak for itself. In my opinion, Lethal League Blaze falls directly on top of Spyro. They took the original game, vastly improved the graphics, added four new characters, Doombox is the best, and they fixed all the problems that the original game had. Yeah, like sometimes in the original you could fuck up and die really early to a slow-ass ball. Well, in the new one, they implemented health bars, so when you get hit by a really slow ball, it only takes off like a little smidgen of health. But if you get hit by a super fast ball, your soul gets consumed by a demon. This small change makes sure that each round ends up with the ball getting to an insane amount of speed before it ends, as opposed to this. Also in the original, parrying was kind of an unbeatable move, whereas in this one you can now grab the ball if someone parries too soon. Oh! <laughs> 
god. I was like concentrating for I am the genius. Fuck. <laughs> also in this one you can grab your friends dead bodies and just fucking yeet them off the screen once they die. So that's pretty great. <laughs> Never mind, I hate this feature actually. Every character has a double jump now, except for Doombox because he's too fucking big. All the characters feel way more unique now, the environments actually change if you get the ball fast enough, the soundtrack is fucking amazing, they put Doombox in the game, they gave Dice a fucking hat, holy so fuck shit, look at this motherfucking dude, looking fresh as fuck, man, hell yeah! All these little tweaks, combined with all the new shit they added in, just make this game really goddamn good, both as a video game and as a video game sequel. Guys, if you're into competitive multiplayer games, I highly recommend trying out Lethal League Blaze. It's a good ass game that's definitely surpassed the original. It's the kind of game where after I played it, I just kind of felt like I had to tell people about how good it was. That's why I even made this video, I just kind of felt compelled to, you know? My only complaints are that Doombox is not big enough and that Dice is not wearing two hats. Other than that, Lethal League Blaze is a fantastic game that I know I'm gonna be enjoying for a long, long time. Game sucks. Zero out of ten.